Hello everybody, Assalamualaikum. Today we are going to talk about antimicrobacterial -micro, anti antibiotics, okay? So when we talk about the antimicrobacterial -micro, uh, antibiotics, there are two diseases which we will be studying today. The first one is tuberculosis and the other one is leprosy. So talking about uh, tuberculosis first of all. So as you can see here, the lungs are there and then you can see the red stained bacteria, right? Okay, so obviously the, the, uh, the picture attached here uh, can tell you that tuberculosis is a disease of the lungs, right? So lungs get lesions, okay? So if, if you get yourself tested, okay, for tuberculosis, let's say uh, the sputum goes or even the blood uh, the blood sample goes all right for the testing and if it is stained okay the procedure i'm sure in microbiology you must have read about the acid fast staining procedure so the bacteria okay they would turn red okay they would be stained red all right uh if it's mycobacterium uh, uh okay the second thing about it is that it is the bacteria, these, they are very small, okay? And they're very light with it, not like the coronavirus, because coronavirus is, again, um, a virus which does uh, settle down on material and all, right? right? But the bacteria that causes tuberculosis, they do not um, settle down, okay, that quickly. So they stay suspended in air for a pretty long time. Since it is the disease of lungs, so you can easily think about it, that it is aerobic bacteria, right? That is why it is staying into the lung where oxygen is in abundant quantity, right? So what are the signs and symptoms of tuberculosis? First of all, how exactly it is spread in? When I'll tell you, you'll say, oh, it's just like the how exactly coronavirus is spread. So, yeah, that is true. You see, if somebody is infected with TB, all right, and they cough or even when they breathe out, okay, so the particles uh, uh, from their nose, okay, or uh, from their mouth, if sputum has uh, the bacteria, all right. So, as I said before in the earlier slide, that they are lightweighted, right? So when they're suspended in the air and they get into the lungs of another person, of a healthy person, right? So the other person can develop this disease, okay? So uh, the sign and symptoms. The person would have fever. They would have uh, sweating at night. They would cough. And when they would cough, blood would come in their sputum. Then... The weight loss would be there, loss of appetite would be there, the person would be fatigued, right? So these are the signs and symptoms. And of course, chest pain is there because it's a disease of the lungs, right? So who are at risk? The people who are, uh, who, are who had HIV or it's in their genes, okay? They're more prone to it. Their immune system is not that um, good. So they are more prone to uh, get tuberculosis. The people who smoke, the people who inject illicit drugs, alcoholics, diabetic patients, elderly, and children, especially less than five. So you see, all of these, if I sum her up, so all of these, if I sum her up, so anything that is uh, causing, you know, uh, immunosuppressive, immunosuppressive defect would be there. So the TB would be there in the lungs of these people. All right. When I look at the uh, x-ray of a person who has developed uh, TB, so you see here, this is a healthy lung. And here, this is um, x-ray of a person who has TB. So you can see that in the upper corner of the lungs, the scars would be there, lesions would be there, all right? And because of these lesions, the 
uh, bl the blood uh, the sputum would have blood in it if you know that we especially when uh, we are living in a developing country right so we do get injected with bcg vaccination so this bcg vaccination is given to us when we are born um, and this protects us from the tuberculosis okay so this bcg has immunity against tuberculosis it immunes us all right now who are the people who would contract it you see since it is spreading just like coronavirus so you can obviously tell that the people uh, who had uh, tb right and if they are in close contact with other people, so they can easily develop this. For example, if a person who is in jail, okay, if a person develops TB, so obviously the people who are living within that uh, unit will be in close contact because a lot of people are living together in a small area. So obviously they all can contract TB, especially when we talk about jails in pakistan and uh, india and you know under developing countries so we can tell that over there if a tb person is there right so since it is a contagious disease right it's a contagious disease so everybody can catch it there are two forms of tb one is latent tb and the other one is active tb if let's say somebody has um, uh, somebody has uh, the mycobacterium inside their lungs, okay? But let's just say macrophages have engulfed them because you see, who kills up the bacteria? Macrophages kills up, right? You see here the macrophage has taken it in and now they're inside. They're not killed. They Nothing has happened to them, but they're just inside, okay? So if in the alveoli, the microbacterium, they're not killed and they're there in the cells, okay? So it is a probability that this, that these uh, bacteria can get active again and the latent TB can be changed into an active TB, right? But when a person is in the latent form of the TB, they can't spread the bacteria, okay? but it can advance to the active one, right? When it can advance to the active one, for example, the person who already has latent TB, their immunity system is suppressed because of any reason. Let's say the person contracted HIV. So along with HIV contraction, when their immunity system will be diminished, then that's the time when latent TB will be converted into active TB, right? Okay. Now, when we talk about the TB disease, so it is active. Um, it makes the person have the symptoms, which we have already discussed, can spread from person to person, can, go, can cause death if not treated. So the goal is to spread the disease, to spread the bacteria, and give medicines continuously for a longer period of time. Now you'll say how long, and I say six months to 12 months. So, the first line drugs which you have to give initially for at least the first two months, okay? So, they are four, there are four drugs, okay? You can remember the mnemonic rights for it. So, rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and then either of these. Either you give them ethambutol or you give them streptomycin. So, for the first two months, you actually have to give all of the, like, four drugs, these three and any of these two, okay? And for the next four months, once the person's, uh, uh, let's say, cul test culture would start to come negative, okay? When we would know that the bacteria are being killed, then for the next four months, we would give the person rifampin and isoniazid. But let's just say... The person, uh, the person's, uh, uh, the test, they don't come out to be negative after two months. 
It means we have to continue giving them for the next two mo next two months more till the results become negative, right? I tell you what, um, when I was a student of Form D, uh, we had our, uh, you can say a house job in JPMC and I was uh, placed in the ward which had TB patients. And oh my God, I was so scared. We actually covered up our faces uh, with the mask. And that was the first time I ever encountered with the N95 mask. And uh, along with it, you see the uh, entire area where the patients of TB are kept, okay? So that's pretty isolated, okay? It's fully locked, okay? And it is, where the doors are shut, windows are shut, all right? And um, they don't live there for a longer period of time because you see, it, it's not possible for a person to live in a hospital for a complete year. But uh, in the initial days, or uh, maybe when the severity gets more, so they are definitely taken up and um, uh, they're there in the hospital. After that, they're sent to home and uh, of course, uh, when they are wearing surgical mask and all the precautions, okay, and then they have to isolate themselves till the result comes out negative, just like we are taking precautions these days when coronavirus is there. All right. So the first drug which we are going to talk about is hyaluronic acid. So it's an analog of py uh, pyroxidin, pyridoxin. Sorry, it's a vitamin B six. Uh, isoniazid is a product that is activated by CAD-G, a catalase peroxidase. The active metabolite inhibits synthesis of the mycobacterial cell wall. It does so by inhibiting the enzyme inoin ACP reductase, uh, required for the synthesis of mycolic acid, which is unique to mycobacteria. Now, when we talk about the pharmacological properties, so Isoniazid penetrates most body fluids and accumulates in the castrated lesions. It enters host cells and has access to intracellular forms of mycobacteria. It is active against mycobacterium tuberculosis, but is not active against most atypical mycobacteria. It demonstrates no cross resistance with other first line anti uh, tubercular drugs so it is ac acetylated in the liver acetyl isoniazid is eliminated faster than isoniazid so the rate of acetylation of uh, isoniazid is genetically determined you, i'm sure in the first year you must have studied about the rapid acetylators and the slow acetylators so i'm not talking about it here when we talk about the therapeutic uses so isoniazid is administered in combination with uh, rifampin and sometimes with uh, a combination is given rifampin and pyrazinamide or more with other first line drugs to counter the development of resistance most often due to mutations that result in its decreased conversion of INH to active metabolite. For prophylaxis, isoniazid is used alone. So you see, uh, when we are taking the antibiotics for a longer period of time, we have to make sure that we do not miss the dose. Otherwise, we can develop resistance, right? Okay. So the adverse effects caused by acid. It may cause allergic reactions, rash or fever. Uh, the metabolites are hepatotoxic. Fast acetylators are more susceptible. So, hepatotoxicity with joint disease is observed in up to 3% of the individuals over the age of 35. It can inhibit mammalian uh, pyridoxal kinase. High serum concentration of this agent may result in peripheral neuropathy. So, slow acetylators are more susceptible. This effect is minimized by co administration of pyridoxin. So isoniazid inhibits the metabolism of other drugs, especially dry phenyl hy um, hydinotoin. 
Hmm. Uh, by the way, this is one of the major things about isoniazid that it does have drug interaction, okay? And it has neuropathy, okay? It causes this neuropathy, okay? Then we have rifampin. So when we talk about its structure, so it is select it selectively inhibits the beta subunit of DNA dependent RNA polymerase of microorganisms to suppress the initiation of RNA synthesis. Most atypical microbacteria are sensitive. Resistant uh, change in affinity in polymerase develops rapidly when the drug is used alone. So it is used in combination with isoniazid and pyrazinamide and also prophylactically for exposure to men meningococcus and H. influenza. Uh, the analogs, rifampentin and rifabutin, they're all uh, they're there and they are pharmacologically similar to rifampin. So pharmacological properties are it is absorbed orally, it enters uh, enterohepatic circulation and induces hepatic microsomes to decrease the half-life of other drugs such as anti-convulsant. So adverse effects are minor. They include nausea, vomiting, fever, jaundice, and and the most important thing which you have to um, educate the people who are taking rifampin is the, their body fluids would start to get orange in color. So the urine would become orange, even the tears and sweat would become orange in color. So it's a warning, it's an education which we have to give to the patients before giving them rifampin. Then we have uh, ethambitol. So structurally, uh, when we talk about its mechanism of action, so it inhibits ribonucleal transferase involved in cell biosynthesis. It is a specific for uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, mcanastase. So therapeutic uses, it is used orally in combination with isoniazid to limit the development of resistance. The adverse effects are that it produces visual disturbances. So basically, uh, the main thing about ethambitol is that, you see, it increases the uh, quantity of uric acid in the body, okay? So because of which a person develops all of these things and eventually they develop gout, okay? So it produces visual disturbances resulting from reversible retro uh, retrobulbular uritis and minor GI disturbances. Those adjustments may be necessary in cases for renal failure. It decreases urate secretion and may precipitate in gout. So it will finally produce gout, okay? Then we have streptomycin. So uh, it is administered parentally in combination with other antimicrobacterial agents. It may be a part of multi-drug regimen to treat resistant strains of TB. So if the ethambitol is not working, you can give this. Then we have pyrazinamide. So it's a pro-drug that is converted into pyrazinoic acid, which inhibits mycobacterial function. Pyrazinamide is inactive at neutral pH, but in a bit, tubercular bacilli in the acidic pH 5 phagosomes of macrophages. If you remember, we talked, right, that it's as, as, uh, acid plus and all. Okay. So it causes hepatotoxicity is a major adverse effect with occasional jaundice and really dead. Uh, it inhibits urate excretion and can and can precipitate in um, gout. Okay. It acts on extracellular tubercellular bacilli. Then we'll talk about the second line drugs which include amino salicylic acid and all of these which we'll talk about. So first of all, amino salicylic acid. It's an analog of TAVA, PABA. It works similar to sulfonamides, but only penetrates mycobacteria. 
amino salicylic acid produces GI disturbances. Then we have ethionamide. So just like I said, the acid, it blocks the synthesis of uh, mycolic acid. Resistance develops rapidly, but there is no fast resistance of isoleic acid. It is poorly tolerated. It commonly produces severe GI disturbances without concomitant pyridoxine peripheral neuropathy to occur. So pyridoxicity is not uncommon. Then we have cyclosurin. So it's an analog of D alanine that inhibits cell wall biosynthesis. So it causes CNS toxicity, including seizures and peripheral neuropathy. Alcohol increases the possibility of seizures. So pyridoxine administered with cyclosurin reduces the incidence of neuropathy. The other agents uh, which we use are parenterally or orally administered agents, which include fluoroquinolone, amicacin, and capriomycin, protein synthesis inhibitors. So these agents used in combination with other active drugs are used to treat multi-drug resistant TB. So commonly used drugs when you talk about it, so in general, six one regimens are used for patients with culture positive TB. When, we, when I'm saying culture positive, it means that we are doing the blood test, okay? So the regimen consists of isoleic acid, disampin, pyrazinamide, and ethambitol. All four agents are used for the initial two months. The continuation phase is of four months and consists of the first two agents only, which is isoleic acid and disampin. This phase is extended for an additional three months in patients who had cavitary lesion at presentation or a follow-up chest x-ray or a culture positive at the two month point. So second line agents can be used when there is resistance to the first line agents. Now we'll talk about the prosy, which is caused by mycobacteria leprae. So if you can see here, this disturbing image, okay? So these are actually the symptoms, okay? So this is loss of temperature sensation, eye damage, uh, numbness, skin lesion, large ulceration, muscle weakness, and progressive uh, disfigurement. So what happens is when a person develops leprosy, okay, they, they uh, first of all, I must tell you all that the symptoms may not develop till five to 20 years, okay? So maybe you even have contracted leprosy right now, but you don't even know about it. All right. Uh, secondly, uh, you see, the, the, these, the, the people who have leprosy, okay, they develop numbness, okay? So that means that uh, they, they are more prone to getting infected because let's just say the person is working and uh, they got a cut or something and they did not even know about it because the the limb was numb, okay? And as a result, the person would develop the infection and as a result, uh, the, you know, infection can get really worse and uh, it could be possible that the person would, would need to have amputation, okay? So that is why um, this is also called as a disease which is Lump, uh, limb, limb, limb losing disease. Okay. All right. So the drugs that we are using here: Dapsone, Rifampin, Ethambitol, Isoniazid. So when we talk about Dapsone, so it is. Uh, by the way, this is again used for a longer period of time. Okay. All of the drugs which we are taking to treat infectious diseases, they they are there for a longer period of time. So dapsone is structurally related to sulfonamide. It comparatively inhibits dihydrotyroid uh, uh, synthesis to prevent folic acid biosynthesis. It is more effective against mycobacterial leprae 
then against uh, M tuberculosis. It is used as second line agent to treat pneumocystis uh, uh, pneumonia in AIDS patients. Treatment may require several years uh, of life. Uh, wait. Treatment may require several years to life. Dapson is used initially in combination with rupampin and uh, clofazimine to delay the development of resistance. Uh, clofazimine, a dye, may discolor the skin. So Dapson produces hemolysis, methemoglobinemia, uh, 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 nausea, rash, and headache. If you remember, we have studied about this uh, methemoglobinemia before as well. So just for a reminder, I have attached this diagram again for you, and then this picture here for you, that the blood is actually uh, the iron, okay, it, gets, it, it would get converted into F3 positive, okay, from F2 positive. So because of the ferric ions, okay, uh, the blood would turn purplish in color and because of which the person would also get the bluish purplish look, okay. So drugs to treat atypical mycobacteria, okay. So they include rifampin, ethambutol, isomy acid, cytochromycin, and ciprofloxacin. Atypical non-communicable uh, mycobacteria include M. cancis, uh, M. marinum, M. avium complex, um, M. Uh, scopolacium, and others. So these account for about 10% of mycobacterial infections. Uh, a combination of rifampin, ethambutone, and isomy acid is used to treat um, M. kinasi. Uh, so the complex, okay, the M. MAC, which is also known as mycobacterium avium complex, includes uh, M. avium and M. intracellular that causes, uh, disseminate disease in the late phase, in the late stages of AIDS. A combination of agents such as plasticomycin ethambutol and ciprofloxacin is used to prevent the emergence of resistance. So the treatment for this infection is usually lifelong. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care.